So in the last chapter, we made this 3D psych backdrop, and now we're gonna go ahead and add some materials to it. The first thing is we're gonna make a very simple material. Now, the way I like to work is very organized with my folder structure. So with that, we're gonna right click in the empty space of our content browser, and we're gonna go ahead and add a new folder, and we'll call this materials, like so. And then we're gonna go into this folder, and we're gonna right click in the empty space again, and we're gonna go and add a material. Material. Now, if you do use the Unreal Marketplace, you could get tons of Unreal materials to help add stuff to your scene like metal or paper or stuff. You can download stuff online, but a lot of the time you don't really need to do that. The basic materials, if you just need a color, work pretty well. So that being said, with this new material, we'll call this M underscore simple material, whatever you want to call it. But the nomenclature or the general naming tools in Unreal, there's a common sort of principle in game development that I like to adhere to and I do recommend most people practice and that is starting the first, the suffix uh, or the prefix, prefix of a material or a static mesh with an M for material or SM for static mesh. So that's a common practice in game dev and I do recommend most people get into that. So with that material saved as M simple material, we can hit control shift S to save it and then we can double click on that material. Now, I know a lot of people really hate nodes. They're scary, they're intimidating, they're confusing, but it's actually really simple once you wrap your head around it. We're basically just saying, hey, this property is connected to this controller. So that being said, under any material in Unreal, and we're using these normal default material settings, we're not using anything super crazy. If you're familiar with Unreal, you'll hear about things like substrate, you can do some amazing cool refraction or subsurface. Most of the time you don't need that stuff. That being said, with this simple material, most materials will have base color, metallic, specular, roughness, and then maybe a couple other channels. Now, if you've never used a 3D software package before, if you've never done 3D at all, that's okay, don't worry. First, we'll talk about the color, and then it's important to understand that even with objects in real life and in 3D and fake, digital, unreal, they're gonna e either be metal or not, so or some value in between, even though technically that's not correct, we can just ignore the fact that we can have a value between zero and one. Most things are either metal or not. You can also see the specular, which will be kind of shininess, which we'll cover in a second, and then the roughness, which is, uh, I guess, how reflective it will be. So if I go ahead and just kind of dock this over here, what I can do is I can take this material and I can drop it onto my object, and we can see that my psych backdrop, if I take my material over here, my psych backdrop is now referencing this simple material. But this simple material here is, why is it not represented? So what I'm going to do is go to the base color and I'll just, I don't know, set this to like any other value, hit okay, and then hit apply. And then we can go ahead and save it. And now that changed. And now we have this cool off-white psych backdrop, which is okay, cool. but. It's a little bit more complicated than that, and I wanna show you how actual game development pipelines work, how gamers work, how uh, people who make games work to make it even faster and easier. So the first thing we're gonna do is in the empty space of our node graph, let's go ahead and take our material window that we got to by double clicking on our material. Let's take this, maximize it, and in the empty space, if we right click, we can move around, but if we right click and hold, we can move around. But if we right click, we can go ahead and start adding so many different types of nodes. And people get so scared of this in Unreal, but you actually don't need to know a whole lot. You just need to know the basics. So the first is we're gonna search up color and we can go ahead and find, I actually don't even do it this way all that much. So we'll actually see. So we're gonna hold the three key on the keyboard. We're holding the number three and we'll left click in the empty space. And that will make a constant vector. So. Uh, instead of color, it's actually constant, and we can see that it's a vector of three. That's why we hold the three. And color is basically just comprised of three values, red, green, and blue. So three different values, constant vector of three makes a color. So right now, everything is set to zero, which means that it's gonna be black. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this top 
little circle arrow thing and connect this to the base color and that's going to make it black now fortunately with this constant three right here if we go down to the lower left hand corner we can see here that we have our color chip we can go ahead and select this and change this to like i don't know purple blue something like that and then click okay and now it's going to be more blue the problem is when we added this it didn't add it didn't apply it here it's like why is that well first we have to hit apply again we'll get to why this is a waste of time in a second but now we have a blue backdrop like like so and we also have this color that can kind of control that now we could very well go into these simple materials here and uh, change these values. So if I wanna make this really reflective and really reflect light, I will set this roughness value to a value of zero. And then when I go ahead and hit apply, it's gonna go ahead and make that a lot more reflective because we don't have a lot of stuff inside our scene. It's probably not gonna show up all that well. You can kind of see it right there. But if I wanted to make this maybe more metal, I would set this met metallic to a value of one and then I would see the preview right here but again hit apply and now it's going to be way more metal and way more shiny okay cool how do we make this faster and easier well first things first what i want to do is take my material window and maximize it and now from here i'm going to hold the one key on the keyboard and then i'm going to left click and that's going to create something called a constant a single value constant so if you right click in the empty space you can type in constant and you can see the constant constant was one two three four etc so we're using a constant one and then we're going to take this value and plug this into the metallic and we'll set this to a value of zero we're going to hold the one key again oh let's undo that really quick I'm going to set that value to 1. I don't know why I did that. Hold the 1 key again and then click left click in the empty space and then take this constant and pipe this into the specular. And I'm going to hold the 1 key again and then pipe this last constant into the roughness. Now, what I like to do is stay organized. So if I go ahead and take these and kind of just align them to the left, we can go ahead and see that our nodes are kind of aligned. Fun fact, if you uh, go ahead and... Uh, hold shift and then use the W, A, S, and D keys, you can change the orientation of your node graph and organize things a little bit more. We could also hold the C key and create a comment and then make a sort of box around this stuff. So we can go ahead and maybe move this, put it all in there, take that, take this stuff, align it there, and we can take this comment and call it color properties you don't need to do it and i actually don't do this comment section all that much but it does kind of put things in the block so it makes it a little bit more organized and easy to see now again we could go ahead and change any of these constant values and now it's basically going to reflect instead of having the number there we have it over here so i'll set the specular to one and i'll set the metallic to zero and now if i go ahead and hit apply we're gonna go ahead and see that it's not, it's no longer metal, but it's still like a, a shiny plastic instead. So that being said, we have the color properties, but it's still taking a lot of time for us to make these changes. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to make a box around all of our properties that we just made. And we're gonna right click and select convert to parameter. And what this does is it basically makes it something that Unreal is looking at like code in the back end, so we can start adjusting this on the fly. So the first thing uh, we can name this parameter. So I'll go ahead and call this color. Cool. Now under this one, we can select the parameter. And we'll call this metallic because this is piped into the metallic. We'll take this parameter and we'll call this specular. And then this bottom one, we'll call this roughness. Now, if you're having a hard time naming your stuff, what you can do is you should be able to right click on it. And where's there a rename? Uh, Hmm, I guess there's no rename, but what you can do and what I do and what I highly recommend is using the F2 key on your keyboard. F2 will allow you to take most things in Unreal and rename things. So if you want to rename this, you can just hit F2 or you can right click. I don't know why it's not letting me rename it. That's okay. 
use F2. Highly recommend keyboard shortcuts. So that being said, we have all of our names for the properties for the parameters of our material. Now under these selected properties, we can see they're selected by this green box around it. We also have this group option. Right now it's set to none. And what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and rename this group. So the group here, we'll call this material properties, whatever you wanna call it. And I do realize that these parameters, you can actually set your name down here. I just get used to keyboard shortcuts, so you live and learn. You could also set some ad additional values for this, like a, a min and max value. So like for the metallic, we know it could either be zero or one, so slider max of one. We can go to our specular here, set the slider max to also one, and the roughness slider max to one as well. So once all of that is done, we can hit apply, and then we can save it. Now, what we're gonna do is we're going to close this material. Now, if I make any of those changes to this, to this material, I still have to save the material. But that's why it's something in Unreal and what game developers use is something called material instances. And that's useful because it allows us to change things on the fly. So to make a material instance, what you're gonna do is you're going to right click on your material and at the very top or near the top, you're gonna to see create material instance. With this, we'll create a material instance and just a general practice, instead of uh, renaming it to the name of the material, I call it MI for material instance. And then when you make a material instance for the first time, what it's gonna do is add an underscore INST for instance at the end of it. I just get rid of that. I know that my material instances are MI underscore material name. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hit Control Shift S. Now I'm going to apply this material to my 3D object. We can see here that this material of this psych backdrop is the M underscore, but we want it to be the MI. And now when we do that, okay, cool, nothing's changed, but the reason why a material instances are valuable is if I double click on this material instance, we're getting a completely different window. And with this ma material properties that just pops up right here, we can see all the different parameters that we made for our material. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on my color, metallic, roughness, and specular. And now if I go ahead and just push this off to the side, I know I'm kind of going off my monitor just a little bit, but bear with me. I can now change the color of this material property of my material instance, and it will adjust on the fly with my project. And the same thing is if I set the specular to lower, or I could set my roughness to a higher amount, and now it's becoming a lot less reflective, or I can turn on my metal, and it's gonna change the way light affects this 3D object. So if I wanna make this a clean, maybe slightly off gray, I'll bring this value, this slider right here, the saturation to a much lower number, and then I can bring the brightness maybe up just a little bit, and now I have a seamless backdrop that I can change the color off to pretty much anything I want really quickly and really easily. And now the benefit of doing it this way is that what you can do under this scenario is, let's say you wanted to try a lot of different colors. What you can do is take this material instance and you can duplicate it. And we can, at the end of it, underscore black. And we can just rename that, go in here, change the properties. So I'll set the metallic to zero. I'll keep the roughness at like 0.8. I'll set it to 0.8 because no object is purely matte. Everything is a little bit, re bit reflective. And then I'll set the color to a very dark value, almost black. And then, yeah, that looks fine for me. And then I, can, don't, I don't even need to save that because I can just take this material black drop it on right there, or I have this one right here. Let's go ahead and hit F2 to rename it, hit the right arrow key to go to the very end of the, the type string, and then hit underscore white. Uh, so we can name that one the white one, and then we can go in here and maybe set the metallic to zero, and then keep the roughness at like 0.8 and then go in here and maybe push that up just a little bit more. So now we have a white color and then we can go ahead and duplicate it one more time, hit the right arrow key, make a, I don't know, a blue one. And then you go in and change this to like a blue color, like over there, sure. Cool, so I can go ahead and close that. And now I have these three simple materials. And then the last thing I do to stay really organized is what I will do is I will make a new folder and I'll call this uh, 
material sources or some way to differentiate the material, which is the source material for all the material instances. So I'll take this, drop it in there, move here. And now I have these three simple materials for my 3D project. So I can use a white one, blue one, black one, whatever I want, or I can make even more colors if I want to. And I'm not changing the material itself. I'm only changing the material instances. So from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add this material white, the material instance white onto my backdrop. And now we have our seamless backdrop. The very last thing I'm going to do, because I, I hate the grid in Unreal, it's just really annoying. I'm going to go to my eyeball right there, go ahead and turn off the grid. So now we're not getting any of that weird jittery Z fighting with our 3D object. Now from here, I'll select my 3D object, make sure it's location at 000, rotation 000, and we're ready to move on to the next lesson, which is importing 3D objects from other software into Unreal. So I hope you learned something from this material breakdown. And if you have questions, please feel free to hit me up and I'll see you in the next one.